Hello all, myself Mr. Siraj Mosra, B.Tech and M.Tech in Thermal Science. I am here with a detailed solution of ISRO exam for mechanical engineering which is a written test for scientists and engineers held on 12th of January 2020. So in this video we uh, discuss and solve the different numericals and questions which are asked in this exam. So let's start. Here the first example is a centrifugal pump having the impeller diameter is 127 mm and the power is 12 HP. If the impeller diameter is changed and it's become 254 mm what is the power you need to find and other parameter is kept constant so here we know the power p is proportional to diameter square and head raised to 3 by 2 okay but here the other parameter is constant so this value head is does not change so we likely write over here p is proportional to d square so in formal mode we can write p upon d square is equals to constant if we rearrange or rewrite this then it is p1 upon d1 square is equals to p2 upon d2 square is equals to constant so we can write in that sense that's why here we need to find p2 so p2 is equals to p1 into d2 by d1 square here the p1 value is given and p1 is 12 hp d2 is given d2 is a 254 mm and d1 is a 127 mm so it's almost double so 254 and 127 mm and the square of this but here 127 2 are 254 so 12 into 2 square is a 4 so 12 into 4 is a 48 hp so this is the power p so here in the given option our right answer is a so almost you can see if the diameter is increased four times then we can say over here the power is increased uh, sorry the diameter is increased twice then the power is increased four times so this is the uh, uh, from this example we can understood so now the second example here the given data in circular tube the diameter is given 100 mm and length is given 30 meter laminar flow the friction factor is given it's 0 0.05 so the friction factor f is given and its value is 0 0.05 you need to calculate the Reynolds number here the options are given so we know the friction factor f is equals to 64 upon Reynolds number that's why Reynolds number is equals to 64 upon frictional factor and this equation is for circular pipe okay so 64 and f is equals to 0 0.05 so by solving this you get the value 1280 and this is your Reynolds number okay so here the answer C is a correct 1280 and this is the equation for circular pipe one more equation F is equals to 16 upon RE okay and this is for uh, non circular pipe okay now the next one here one open tank it is filled with water height is 20 meter so height of the tank is given 20 meter and here you need to find the velocity 
of water flow at outlet if outlet at the base of the tank so here you can see a one tank and here it is a at the base there is a outlet and here it is a water and the height of this water is given 20 meter and you need to find the velocity at the out here so this condition is given so we know the equation from the Bernoulli's uh, equation the velocity is nothing but it is under root 2 into g into h so by using this 2 into g is a 9.88 or we can say it is 10 and height is given 20 mm 20 meter so by using this by calculating this we find the value 20 meter per second approximate value so our answer is b so it's quite simple the next one for the non dimensional specific speed value is 1 for the maximum efficiency which of the following turbine is preferred so here it is a fact based question for that we are using the Kaplan turbine so for given such a condition we can use the Kaplan turbine the next question and experiment conducted with the fluid density is given 1 kg per meter cube density is given 1 kg per meter cube and at the velocity u is given velocity 10 meter per second the free stream pressure static pressure is 100 pascal and local static pressure so two pressure is given one is a local pressure and its value is 101 1 kilo pascal and second one is a static pressure or free stream static pressure so free stream and its value is 100 kilo pascal now what is the uh, pressure coefficient so cp you need to find so we know the cp is equals to change in pressure upon one half rho v square rho u square so the pressure change is 100 101 minus 100 divided by 1 by 2 density is a 1 u is a tan square but here it is in kilo pascal so convert it into pascal so multiply with 10 raised to 3 so you get the value 20 so your right answer is 20 <coughs> now the next one for the PV diagram of steady flow compression the intercooling can be represented as which line horizontal vertical parabolic or so if you draw the PV diagram for the intercooling then we know the first process is compression process so first 1 to 2 is compressed then cool down the volume is decreased pressure is constant and then next time it is isentropic compression process so here 1 2 3 and 4 so here 2 and 3 it is intercooling it is intercooling so here 1 and 2 is a compression process and it is uh, isentropic process and 3 and 4 is also so by using this intercooling we can reduce the work requirement for the compression process and here we are not change its pressure the pressure is remain constant p2 is equals to p3 but volume is decreases from p2 to p3 volume is decreases and also temperature is decreases so the requirement of work can be reduced so here the line is horizontal line so b is your right answer now the next one which of the following is a non newtonian fluid so uh, newtonian and non newtonian fluid we know the uh, law of viscosity newton's law of viscosity newton's law of viscosity here shear stress is proportional to or is equals to 
mu into del u by del y where mu is a dynamic viscosity and del u by d is called velocity gradient so if any fluid which obey this condition means shear stress is equal to this value then it is called newtonian fluid newtonian fluid but if the fluid is does not obey it does not obey then it is called non-newtonian fluid non-newtonian fluid so here in this case here the given fluids are air water and gasoline they all are a newtonian fluid because they are obey they are obey these rules newton's law okay so they all are they all are a b and c they all are newtonian fluid okay so the answer is none of the above because they all are non newtonian the next one a hot body a temperature is given 1000 kil uh, kelvin a heat is transferred 2000 kilo joule of to the another body having the 500 kelvin determine the net change in entropy so here one body is there having the temperature of 1000 kelvin heat is transferred to the another body having the temperature is 500 kelvin here the heat is transferred 2000 kilojoule this condition is given their body too now you need to find the change in entropy so we know the entropy is q by t or dq by t change in heat transfer uh, sorry heat transfer upon absolute temperature another things we need to focus over here is the plus and minus sign so if any system if we add heat to the system we are taken positive if heat remove from the system then we are taking negative so in this case if i see the for body one s1 q q is the heat is rejected from the body so it is leave to the system one so that's why we are taking as a q negative and it is 2000 and the temperature for body one is a 1000 so answer is minus 2 kilojoule per kg for s1 now for body 2 the entropy is here the 2000 kilojoule heat is gain so that's why here we are taking positive it is added and temperature is 500 so the total values become here plus 4 now the delta s it is change in entropy and it is minus 2 plus 4 so its value become plus 2 kilojoule per kg okay so the answer is C answer plus 2 kilojoule per kg now the next one highest um, ratio of the specific heat so the ratio of the specific heat it is called gamma adiabatic index and it is nothing but it is the cp by cv specific heat at specific heat at constant pressure upon specific heat at constant volume okay so here the value for gamma is same for argon and helium so the answer is a and b both a and b both both right answer argon and helium and the value for that is gamma value is 1.66 value okay and we know for air is value is 1.4 for air the value of gamma is 1.4 now the next which of the following can be used to determine the various sorry variation of saturation pressure with temperature along the phase boundaries so the clausius clapeyron relation is used to find the saturation pressure with temperature along phase boundaries 
the fact based question now the next one here the air at 27 degree centigrade and 100 kilo pascal enter in steady flow nozzle at velocity 100 meter per second if the nozzle area is 0 0.5 meter square what is the mass flow rate you need to find the mass flow rate of the nozzle so mass flow rate is equals to rho a v rho is the density a is the area and v is the velocity so area is given 0.5 meter square velocity is given 100 meter per second you need to find density so you know the gas characteristic equation gas characteristic equation and it is the PV is equals to M R T so P is equals to M upon V into R T but here M upon V it is called Rho into R T so Rho is equals to P upon R T so if you put the value pressure is given 100 kilopascal R the R is nothing but it is called gas constant it is called gas constant and value for air R for air it is the value for 0 0.287 0 0.287 kilojoule per kg into Kelvin this values for R for air so here we put 0 0.287 and temperature is given and it's the Mm, 27 degree centigrade so convert into Kelvin so it is 300 so you get the value of density and density is a 1.16 1.16 kg per meter cube put this value over here so 1.16 area is given 0 0.5 velocity is given 100 so if you calculate you get the mass flow rate is equals to the value of the mass flow rate is 58.071 kg per second so this is the answer so in given option there is a option C is a correct answer now the next what is the critical point of water so the value of critical point of water pressure is 22.06 megapascal okay so this is also a fact based question now the next one a shower is mixture the cold water is 27 degree C and 5 kilogram per minute hot water condition is given 77 and 15 gram kg per minute what is the exit temperature so whatever the amount of heat is released by hot water is gained by the cold water so we can say the amount of heat can release by hot water is equals to amount of heat gained by the cold water so we can write over here mass of the cold water mass flow rate of the cold water into cp into change in temperature so here the change in temperature we can write for the hot water it is th minus t is equals to mass flow rate of cold water here it is hot water into cp into the cold water <laughs> sorry it is t minus tc so if we put the value in this and calculate so mass flow rate of the hot water is here a 15 th is given and its value is 77 minus t is equals to your cp cp cancel out mass flow rate of the cold water is 5 t minus tc tc is given 27 so if you calculate the t value after mixing to this you get 64.5 degree c so this is your temperature T after mixing to this two fluid we get the value okay so now next 
page of the following uses a regenerator so which cycle is using a regenerator so here are the two cycle erection and sterling both are using regenerator so your right answer is d d is your right answer <coughs> sorry regenerator is a method in which the exit heat or loss heat which are we can say exit from the system this can be utilized for uh, some heating purpose inside the system so we can say one kind of heat recovery we can get in the regenerator now the next the ratio of convective mass transfer to the mass diffusion it is called the answer is Sherwood number it is also a fact based question answer is Sherwood number actually when you go for the examination please remember the numbers and its definition because in this exam also you can see two or three questions are from only number okay so the next a gas contain a cylinder with movable piston 100 kilogram mass so mass of the piston is given 100 kilogram and 200 2500 joule of the heat flow into the system so heat flow to the system so q is given 2500 joule here into the system so plus sign the internal energy of the gas is increased 1500 joule so u is given 1500 joule what is the distance through which the pistons can move so you need to find the distance distance which the uh, piston can move so you need to find distance l okay so from the first law of thermodynamics here q is equals to u plus w or dq is equals to du plus dw so u is uh, q is given 2500 u is given 1500 plus w so from this relation we get the w is equals to 1000 joule okay but what is the w w is nothing but it is a force into distance what is the force force is equals to mass into gravity and into distance L. so <coughs> after modifying this equation we get mass is equals to 100 g is equals to 9.81 and distance l is equals to we need to find but what is the value of w we already find it is a thousand and here we can use the round figure the 10 meter per second square so for doing this you get the value of l is equals to 1 meter so the distance traveled by this piston it is a 1 meter and your right answer is b okay now the next here given data is cop of the refrigerator is given it is used at room having the temperature of 300 kelvin what will the heat intake through a section of refrigerator wall area of 100 so size of the refrigerator is given and thickness is given so the wall thickness and wall area is given on the conduction value of thermal conductivity k is given you need to find the amount of heat intact from the room to the refrigerator so here you can see here if you understand this thing here it is a one room okay and here sorry here here one refrigerator and this refrigerator dimension is given 100 by 
hundred centimeter square and this room the temperature of this room is given 300 Kelvin this condition is given so heat is flowing from high temperature to low temperature so in that way also we need to understand for the thermodynamic concept of the refrigerator so here the for refrigerator we know we give some amount of work and here some amount of heat is abstracted from your refrigerator to the atmosphere so here it is our atmosphere is room and here the temperature is higher so i put over here th higher temperature here the temperature of inside the refrigerator so inside temperature is tl so this condition is given now what is the cop cop is a refrigeration effect upon work input so refrigeration effect is tl now what is the work input so if we apply the uh, we can see here energy balance then we know the ql here amount of heat leave to the system and qh amount of heat added to the system room so q l plus w is equals to q h so you can write w is equals to q h minus q l so the cop is nothing but it is the q l upon w okay so from that q l is equals to q h minus q l and we know q is equals to mcp delta t so here you can write QL is the TL and QH it is the TH and here it is a TL lower temperature and higher temperature. So this is the COP of refrigerant refrigerator. Now <coughs> for the example the COP of refrigerator is given phi and the value of TL the lower temperature inside the refrigeration is not given so I put as it is TH is given higher temperature is given and its value is 300 minus TL if you solve this then you get the value of TL and TL is a 250 Kelvin so first we find TL now here the heat is conducted from this room to this refrigerator with the help of conduction only so for the conduction we know the Fourier's law of heat conduction and it is Q is equals to minus Ka dt by dx so what is the um, Q over here Q is the heat which are transferred A, K is the thermal conductivity A is the area and um, dt is a change in temperature and dx is the thickness so here the k value thermal conductivity is given what one watt meter per second so one watt area is given the area of this refrigerator is 100 by 100 100 by 100 temperature change so here th minus tl higher temperature is 300 degree minus lower temperature is 250 degree and the dx the thickness of this wall and thickness of the wall is given 10 centimeter so here I put over here the 10 centimeter if I calculate then the value of Q is equals to 50,000 watt 50,000 watt so I think here there is a no option in given examination in given options there is a no 50,000 okay but right answer is this one q is equals to 15,000 watt now the next one a mass of 1 kg of air at 27 degree centigrade and 0.98 atmosphere is taken through the diesel cycle if the compression ratio is 16 calculate the temperature of the air 
after the compression process. Here the ratio of the specific heat is given 1.5. So gamma is given 1.5. Here another thing is given the temperature of the air. Mass of the air is given 1 kg. Temperature of the air. Initial temperature of the air is given 27 degree C. So it is 300, and Kel 300 Kelvin. You need to find the T2 at the outlet. What is the temperature of the air? Okay, so for diesel cycle, diesel cycle, the compression ratio T2 by T1, it is compression ratio equals to gamma minus 1. Here the compression ratio is also given and it is 16. Okay, so that's why T2 is equals to T1 multiply over here T1. So T1 is 300 Kelvin into RC. RC is a 16, gamma, gamma is a 1.5 minus 1. So you get T2 is equals to the value of T2 is mm, 1200 Kelvin. If you calculate this value, you can get this. So from 1000 so minus 273, so you get in degree centigrade and its value is. 927 degree C. So this is the correct answer. So C option is your correct answer. Okay. So next one is a an aircraft its take off the roll at the sea level at the temperature of the sea level is 18 degree C. What is the approximate speed of the aircraft if the temperature is measured by the probe? At the exit of the diffuser is 36 degrees centigrade assuming the CP of the air is 1 so here the aircraft is lifting so it's moving so it's have some kinetic energy 1 half mv square and this energy is converted into heat so its value is m CP into delta T change in temperature so it's quite simple mass of the cases are same so v square is equals to 2 cp delta t so that's why v is equals to under root 2 cp delta t okay so here the 2 cp is given 1 delta t is a change in temperature so temperature is changed from 36 degree 18 degree 18 to 36 degree yes 36 minus 18 so here it is 18 so answer is 36 under root and value of the v is 6 meter per second okay so in the given option the right answer is c option the next example the external surface of the wall is 3 meter height, 5 meter width and 0.5 mm thickness is at the temperature of 2 degree centigrade. So I draw over here one wall, this wall, okay. So this is the external surface, I put over here external surface so you can easily here the temperature is 2 degree C and the dimension of the wall is given it is 3 meter height so 3 meter by 5 meter square and the thickness so this is the thickness and thickness is given 0 0.5 meter so this condition is given the heat is lost 151 from the room so here it heat is lost from the room to the outside so it is lost okay across the wall find the inner wall temperature so here the inner wall temperature you need to find okay. so already the temperature of the inner temperature is given external temperature is given you need to find the inner temperature here this value we need to find so it is 
uh, quite simple the thermal conductivity of this wall is given and it's 1 watt per meter into Kelvin so directly you can use the heat is transfer by conduction only the conduction mode of heat transfer is carried out so you can use the Fourier's law of heat conduction Q is equals to K A change in temperature upon thickness so minus K dt by dx so here K is a 1 watt area area is given 3 into 5 change in temperature so here you need to find the temperature so T2 minus T1 T1 is a 2 degree centigrade I convert into uh, Kelvin so it's become 275 Kelvin so its value is 275 Kelvin divided by dx the thickness of this wall is given and its value is 0 0.5 okay so you can find the heat rejected from this room is or sorry the heat rejected from the room is given and its value is 150 watt so Q is given 150 and if you calculate the upper value by putting this 150 and you get the value of T2 and T2 is nothing but it is value is 7 degrees C or 280 Kelvin 280 Kelvin you get the answer 280 Kelvin okay so your answer is A perfect answer is A so it's quite simple using the conduction so this is the second example based on the conduction so now the next one is a, a typical range of prime rate number for water so it is factor based question and it is 1.7 to 13.7 the analogy of momentum and heat transfer momentum and heat transfer it is known as it's known as Stern and Colburn analogy so answer is C also it is a fact based question which of the following is true for the relay number or relay flow at Mach number is equals to 1 so when the Mach number is 1 at that time the entropy of the system is become maximum also this is a fact based also the most question oh sorry next question is the fluid passes through the wall insulated tube 4.7 yeah, centimeter square cross section area 5 meter length mm, pipe friction coefficient is given 0 0.07 the velocity is given so flow can be represented using so this flow can be represented using the fan of flow model fan of flow model okay so all are the fact basis question uh, next one is a, a fluid density is 1 gram cubic centimeter is state with the grass of number 2 into 10 raise to 6 and Prandtl number is 0 0.7 assume the acceleration due to gravity so G is given 10 meter per second square calculate the relay number so the relay number is nothing but it is grass of number into Prandtl number so the grass of number is given 2 into 10 raise to 6 and Prandtl number is given 0 0.7 so its value if you calculate then 7.7 to 1.4 so 1.4 into 10 raise to 6 this is the value of relay number so the right answer is A A is your right answer now the next example a cold fluid enters a counter flow heat exchanger at 15 degree 8 kilogram per second hot stream same liquids enter the heat exchanger 75 degree and 2 kilogram the specific heat is 4 kilojoule per kg into degree C we need to find the maximum heat transfer so here for the maximum heat transfer MCP heat capacity should be minimum 
into change in temperature it should be minimum okay so here we calculate for the cold fluid first of all so what is the m for cold fluid mass flow rate is sorry m into cp so cold fluid for the cold fluid m into cp is a, m is a 8 and cp is a 4 so this value is 32 okay for hot fluid m into cp is mass flow rate is 2 kg and cp is 4 so its value is 8 so from 2 this value is minimum so we need to choose this mcp okay so here it is mass flow is 2 sorry <coughs> mass flow rate is 2 and specific it is 4 so 2 into 4 into change in temperature so the change in temperature is 75 degree minus 15 degree so if you calculate this value you get 480 kilo watt answer so this is the Q maximum okay so for minimum heat transfer you can choose MCP max so if they ask for minimum heat transfer you can use this cold one okay next the temperature of a surface is 0. Point, sorry the temperature of the surface with 0. 0.2 meter area and it's 17 degree c calculate the wavelength corresponding to the maximum monochromic emissive power so this is the based on the maximum heat transfer rate for um, assuming the black body winds displacement law it is nothing but it is based on winds displacement law so winds what is the winds displacement law winds displacement sorry <coughs> winds displacement sorry displacement displacement low and it is for maximum monochromic wavelength it is lambda max lambda m into t is equals to constant is equals to constant and this constant value is 2898 mu m to k this is the winds displacement row so here you need to find wavelength maximum wavelength for given corresponding temperature uh, 17 degree c so lambda max is equals to 2898 upon temperature t so here the given temperature is 17 degree so 2898 upon 17 degrees centigrade plus 273 is converted into Kelvin. So you get lambda m monochromic uh, um, wavelength and its value is 9.99 micrometer microns. Okay, so approximate value is 10. Okay, so the right answer from the given option is C, 10 micrometers. Okay, now the next example, which of the, sorry, which of the following elements is added to the high speed tool steel? Which of the following element is added to the high speed tool steel as a scavenger to remove the slag impurities during the melting and also for increasing the cutting efficiency of the tool? So, for making the tool, which, which parameters is added? So, vanadium, 
is added to get this kind of property in the design of or construction of uh, manufacturing of this such a tool okay